Troy built Mustang XP50 will turn over, getting spark, fuel pump kicks on but will not start. Red wire going to PTO switch was shorted out on frame. What did it fry that could cause it not to start or stay running? Engine will start with starting fluid but stalls immediately. Hello, and thank you for choosing Just Answer. I'll be helping you today and am committed to providing clear and concise answers to your question. Does this have a fuel solenoid on the carburetor? If so, you hear it clicking when you turn the key switch between the run and off positions? Site guidelines require that I post all troubleshooting steps or partial answers as answers, but this is certainly not the final answer yet. Additional troubleshooting will be required. So please hold off on rating until we determine the exact problem. Please use the reply to expert link so we can continue the discussion. Just to give you the entire problem. I was trying to fix the PTO. The mower was running and working fine except the last time I mowed the lawn there were a couple of times I went to go from reverse to forward and the blades would not engage. After sitting for a few minutes and going back and forth they would kick on, I could finish mowing the lawn. I decided to check the PTO switch and the safety switches when the red wire from the PTO switch was grounded to the frame. The mower was running and immediately stalled. The engine turns over, gets fired to the plugs and you can hear the fuel solenoid click when you turn the key. Spray a little starting fluid and it starts right up until the fluid burns off and stalls. Apparently it's not getting fuel but I can't figure out why. The pump seems to run off of a vacuum and not electrical. The vacuum line is also getting suction. Any solution? Most fuel pumps have three lines and are indeed vacuum pulse operated. If you remove the line going to the carburetor, and crank the engine over you get a good supply of fuel? Just tried it and no fuel is coming out. First thing to try is to loosen the fuel to make sure you don't have a blocked vent. Sometimes it's just the causing back pressure in the tank that prevents fuel from flowing. Next, please check that the pulse line that goes to the block is well connected and not leaking. That line uses pulses from the crankcase to operate a diaphragm. If it's leaking air you won't get a good pulse. I would also check the tank for any blockage coming from the line to the fuel pump. If you get trash in the tank, or any buildup in the line, or plugging in the inline filter it will prevent fuel from flowing. Also check the line between the fuel pump and the carburetor. If there are any leaks in any three of these lines, or any blockage, that will cause the fuel pump to stop delivering. If all of these things check out well, then you have a bad fuel pump on there. Please let me know. Found blockage and fixed problem. Do you have a wiring diagram or can you tell me the wire colors for the different safety switches? Or how to check the PTO switch to see what is causing the PTO problem. Excellent. Can you give me the model and serial number from the data plate, please? Model info. Model 17 BF2 ACP 01130351 Serial 1 L118 G20195. Thank you. Let me see if I have this schematic. Troy Built has a ton of them. I'm not finding that particular harness. It takes a 925-04847A. But I think this one will be extremely close with perhaps only minor differences. The important stuff will be the same anyway. 
also attach the troubleshooting procedures for the PTO switch. If anything doesn't seem to match or is unclear, please just ask. Alice here's my general troubleshooting guidelines on PTO problems. Been using these steps for years and it usually pinpoints the problem. 1. First, check your battery. The PTO takes a great deal of current to operate. Consider that you are energizing an electromagnet that has to stay joined with a metal plate while the horsepower of your engine and the load created by the cutting deck are trying to pull them back apart. If your battery isn't fully charged, or is failing under load, the PTO goes cannot work. A fully charged battery will put out about 12.7V. By the time it drops to about 12.1V it's 50% discharged. 2. Also, check to make sure the battery is rated at least 350 cold cranking amps. If you have possibly replaced your battery, this could be the cause. Also, we find a higher incidence of initially defective batteries sold though discount retailers than those servicing dealers. 3. If the battery keeps doesn't maintain its charge, you may have a charging system problem. A word of caution, never jumpstart a lawnmower with a running car. The higher powered charging system of the car will likely blow out and ruin your mower's charging system. The charging system should be checked against manufacturer specifications to make sure it's performing properly. 4. Your PTO switch could be failing. Some switches will open when they get hot. 5. Check for loose wires where they attach to the PTO clutch. If they wiggle loose, current cannot flow. 6. There's always the possibility the PTO clutch itself could be going bad. Some are adjustable, and this can make a difference, saving the cost of replacement. If you find slots and adjusting nuts, you can go in and check the gap between the two halves with a .015 feeler gauge. Make sure it's adjusted equally all the way around. Keep me posted, please. I have had to jumpstart the mower with the car before, never knew it would or could hurt it. It has run fine since then. Voltage on battery is 12.57 from positive to negative terminals. The battery is only 250 cranking amps but I used it the entire season last year with no issues. The issue didn't start until the first Mao of this season. Do you think I just need to replace the battery? Also the layout of my property would benefit greatly if I could put a toggle switch on the reverse safety switch so I can back down my hill and mow both up and down. Can I just install a toggle switch instead of the reverse safety switch so that I can close the circuit at will allowing the blades to keep turning in both forward and reverse? Jumping from a vehicle doesn't always damage but it runs the risk, so I always err on the side of caution. If you unplug the connector at the clutch and take a reading there after engaging the PTO switch do you still get full voltage there? Also if you take a battery reading while cranking the starter, how much does it drop? If it goes under 10 I would suspect a bad cell in the battery since your voltage reading indicates about 90% charged. 12.38 volts at connector to PTO clutch. 11.9 volts when bumping ignition. Voltage dropped to 9.2 when actually starting. Then that should be sufficient. Without being able to see it, I'm leaning a bit more toward the clutch than the battery. Although you could even jump at the clutch from a vehicle battery to test. Just disconnect the connector and go direct to the clutch with it removed from the harness. 
you know for sure there is enough amperage that way. Again, not vehicle not running. I apologize, for Sue reason I overlooked the question on the reverse switches. I always get really nervous on that question since it really is a safety concern. With even the most diligent of us, things happen. And I'm privy to so many accidents that are tragic. One instant becomes life-changing. Just last week a man amputated both of his daughter's feet. I cannot imagine how that must be for that poor family. It also means that legally when bypassing a safety system the ones doing it take liability and manufacturers lawyers almost always get the factory clear of any responsibility. With that caveat, it's really easy to do. Just put another switch in parallel with the two safety switches. The way it works is so long as both either switch is allowing current to the PTO clutch, you keep mowing. That allows you to go into reverse on one side or the other but if you do both together, it breaks the path. An extra switch could be put in place to keep the path going regardless. If you decide to do this, please be extremely careful. No harm on my watch, please. That is my biggest fear. The clutch is $329 and it doesn't look like it can be adjusted. There are no bolts on the bottom just rivets. I guess I will try to bypass the safety switch for reverse and hope that it is the problem and maybe going bad. If not, I guess I will have to break out the checkbook. Thanks, xxxxxxxxxxxx been a great help and money well spent. If you have a home improvement or appliance question and want to chat with an expert now visit justanswer.com slash YTHI.